Well, hello there, all of you amazing lunatics out there in the world. I just had a... Uh, well, it's a little bit dirty, but I just had a sip of my Linux nerd CS here. Because I'm going to talk about a, a misconception that a lot of people have. And that is that... Or the misconception is that... Um, well, th this is kind of the party line that a lo lot of us Linux users are saying here. Is that you should want Linux at home because it's running on... You know, it's running like what? What is the the numbers like uh, on the top one million or the on the one million top server web servers? It's like ninety percent or something like that. On the overall server market, anything from a file server to you know a porn server, it's only forty eight percent, forty something, I think it is, or thirty nine something. So it's not the dominant, but it's well used and it's dominant in in a lot. Well, it's not again. <sighs> Go watch my video called uh, Windows is not 90% or oh, sorry, Linux is not 90% of the server market where I break down the numbers from what they are in 2022. But a lot of people, they, they, they say this and I used to say the same that, well, Linux is amazing on a web server or on a server in general. And Linux is amazing on a server in general. Linux has been used on supercomputers, so therefore you should use it also. I'm going to show you why that is a blatantly false statement to make. You may say, why is that, you stupid idiot? Why is that wrong to tell people that Linux is great as a desktop when it's great as a server? Really easy. It's not the same. Yes, they are computers. Yes, they use a CPU. They use RAM. They use a motherboard. But it's kind of like saying that uh, a Formula 1 car is great on a track, so therefore everyone should be running a Formula 1 car. A server is a purpose-built system. Depending on what you want with the server, you build it out to, to do that from the hardware to the software. It's purpose built. So that means that you have a lot of things in there that are only there to serve what the server role is. You don't have all of these extra things. The same goes with Windows, by the way. That's why I have Windows Server 2022 standard evaluation up and running to show you the difference. We all know Windows 10, we all know Windows 11. This is based on Windows 10. You're like, well, Windows 11 is out. Why are they not using Windows 11? Because they are not focusing on the latest technologies, at least desktop technologies. They are focusing on stability and security. So already here, you can see this is massively different from Windows 10 that this is based on. There's a lot of services, a lot of things. I, I forgot to show you guys that, but we can look at the, the, the services here. You know, there's a lot of things that you don't see here that you will see in... Um, a full-blown Windows install of Windows 10 or 11. Like I said, there's no Xbox in here. There's no uh, uh, store. There's no Microsoft store in here and so on. So comparing this version of Windows that runs on the server to the one that you're running at your home is night and day. They look kind of the same, but they are not the same under the hood. So if Windows server is more stable and great, that means that don't mean that Windows would be more stable and great on the desktop. The same with Linux. So let, let's go in and look a little bit about, about, about the Windows world or Linux world. This is how you install Ubuntu server. I think Ubuntu server is one of the few only ones that, that don't have a, a classic, or not a classic, but a traditional GUI install. This is what we will call a non-curse environment to install Ubuntu server. And you, will, you install it like this, basically in the command line. And you will get something to this nature. When you're done here, they're doing a, a update. Yeah, they are upgrading the system. You're going directly into a non-GUI environment. And, and just like with Windows, Ubuntu Server, if you have ever installed it, has almost nothing installed. You have to select what kind of server board you want it on doing the install, just like with SUSE and Red Hat and stuff like that. So you have to add on, look at it, look at Ubuntu Server a little bit like a traditional Arch install. There's only the basics to get it up and running on your on your server. Again. Massively different from going and take Ubuntu and install it on your desktop, you know, normal Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, or Mint, or any other distribution. Massively different. Like, if you compare this with the Ubuntu desktop, night and day with stuff that's pre-installed. So if Ubuntu server is massively stable, we can't draw the conclusion and say, well, therefore Ubuntu desktop or, you know, Ubuntu 22 or 4 non-server edition should be just as stable also. 
Not really, because we have all of these extra layers of services, technologies, and programs running that we don't have running on a server. Just to show you guys, this is how a headless installer Windows Server looks like. A little bit hard to see, but it's basically just a command prompt, a PowerShell. And then you go nuts. But you get the idea here. So the operating system that you are using, Windows or Linux on a server, is massively different from the from the way that you run your operating system as a desktop user or workstation. Massively different. You could probably, and this is not, you know, a fact, but I would guess that there's probably close to 50% or close to 50% more shit running on your desktop compared to a server, no matter what operating system it is. Your desktop, this is what I kind of call a desktop operating system, it's a general purpose operating system. It mean, That means that it has to be able to do everything. It has to work on everything. A server, well, it only has to run on limited hardware. Like it can run, you see I run it in a virtual machine, it can also run on your computer, but it's only certified to some extent to run on specific hardware. That don't mean that you can't run it on other hardware, and a lot of people do. They take their old computers and install Windows Server and any server on it, and that's it. But that does not the intention of the server editions of a operating system. You know, it's like taking a, a strong man and trying to make him into a, uh, a bodybuilder, or trying to take a strong man and make him into a sprinter. Can he do it? Yeah, with a lot of training and fiddling around and stuff like that, but that's not... No, he's not training for 10 years to become a 500 meter dash sprinter. He's training 5, 10 years to become a strong man. So his build is totally different from a sprinter and stuff like that. Not mean that he can't do it. it just means he has to put a lot of work into it. We're going down the rabbit hole, people, here. Because it's not just the software that makes servers more stable, more reliable, have more uptime. It's also about the hardware. I say this that. What makes a server stable and reliant and stuff like that is 50% software, 50% hardware. If you want the same experience with a server OS on your hard drive, or hard drive on your desktop at home, you need to run the same hardware to get or to expect the same experience. So let's look a little bit at this. This is how a server looks like. It has a CPU, it has RAM, it has a motherboard, you know, power supplies and stuff like that, hard drives and whatnot. But this is not the same as what you have in yours right now. Most of these components here have been certified, tested, tested for stability. They have a lot of error correcting technologies in them that you probably don't have on your hardware at home, down to the motherboard, to the RAM, to the CPU, even to the fucking power supply. And... Um, you may say, oh, this is the power supply. No, this is the power supply. It don't even fucking look the same, you know. RAMs, they kind of look the same. CPUs look the same. But let, let's look at, at, at another motherboard here. We have four CPUs here. You don't have four CPUs in your fucking system. You have one. One. And uh, a lot of multitasking that's great for a server is great because of more you know CPUs, more cores, and more physical CPUs. So let's say Wind Linux is more optimized to run on four CPUs that has a lot of cores. That means nothing for you if you only have one CPU. You can utilize that Linux runs better on multiple CPUs. What you could benefit from is that if Linux runs better on multiple cores on one CPU, which it theoretically do, there's conflicting evidence, but in the overall generalization is that Linux is better at multitasking. Well, that will benefit you on the desktop. But already here you can see, this is not an untypical server. Some servers have one CPU, some have more than one CPU. Depend on, again here, it depends on the role of the server. That don't mean that you can't use this server for single CPU workloads. Or that you can't use a single CPU work, uh, server to do multiple CPU workloads. Just be, mean that's really, really slow at it. Or you can't do as many things with it. But again, massively different. Just from the look at it. Again, power supply. This is what an enterprise server CPU looks like. This is an older generation. A Xeon processor from Intel. 
they are bending this the the silicon really really uh, conservatively because of stability they are underclocking it compared to the desktop versions of our intel cpu in the name of stability heat and stuff like that and air corrects and all of that fucking shit they're doing a lot of things you can't eat uh, yeah, I don't think you can overclock a CN process. Some you can, but not all. Less. I've seen people do it, but some but not all. But anyway, they are doing a lot of things here to make sure that your server is not fucking up. That the hardware is not fucking your server up. On the desktop, they kind of do it, but they also throw in a lot of fucking technologies on the server, uh, uh, desktop CPU. They need to make sure with 3D animation, with, you know, gaming performances needs to be there. They need to think about anything from watching, you know, your latest fucking uh, cross you have uh, on a porn star's website, you know, going on to whatever the fuck your favorite porn star's website is every day, to rendering videos, to playing games, and all, all of that technology needs to be in a desktop CPU. So you won't see a lot of th um, gaming-related technologies on the CPU or on a, on a server. So... Uh, back in the day, we had something called 3D Max on a, on, a, on a CPU. Still there, but it's called something else nowadays. That was not on a server CPU, because that was a, a technology that was in the silicon on a desktop to help you give gaming performances. You also don't see, I don't think you see an uh, onboard graphic card on them. Some you may do, but at least this one you don't. That's not a priority. And stuff like that. You get what I'm saying here. This is a server CPU. This is not what you... Can you take this? Some motherboards are compatible with the AMD and Intel server CPU equivalent. So can you take this and put it into your motherboard? Depending on the motherboard, could you take a server motherboard and put it in your PC with a server CPU? Yeah, but now you're getting closer and closer to becoming a server system that are purposely built for being a server versus a desktop. Let's look at a motherboard again here, a little bit more laid out of got them out of order here uh, another motherboard here ram where's all the leds you know where's all the the fast flashy fucking shit it's not there it's using error correcting memory and stuff like that to make sure that on a hardware level the hardware is doing as much as humanly possible to help the server be more stable so it's not just the operating system it's also the hardware is there memory out there? Can you use ECC memory on, on, on uh, desktop hardware? Some motherboards support it. I think all current desktop CPUs support it. But again, look at the speeds. They are not that great. The, the timing is not that great on, on the RAM modules for, for servers because they want to make sure that they don't fuck up. So they, they underclock them to some extent. Again, also because of heat and whatnot. What about the good old power supply is massively different from your EVGA, Crosshair, or Thermaltake, LED, flashy, flashy power supply you have in your computer. Plus, most of these components in this power supply are premium components. They have been tested, verified, and stuff like that. There's, this power supply may even run if one capacitor fucking blew up in your face. Where on your power supply, on your system, if one thing goes wrong, it more than likely will not work at all. There's also probably better search protection. There's also probably more overworld protection in this one here than the power supply that you have in your system. Meaning that if something goes wrong with the power supply, it's not frying the rest of the server. Where in your system, and this has happened to a lot of people, something goes wrong with the power supply and it fries everything in your, in your computer. Everything. You can be lucky that you maybe your hard drives are not fried, but your CPU, your RAM, your motherboard, you can take everything with it really fucking easy. Things like that is built in with this. There's some high-end uh, desktop power supplies that protect that also on, on, on the desktop mic, but not to this extent. So what makes Linux and Windows Server massively stable, massively fast, and massively great is all of these things here combined and that's not your desktop when you install linux you don't want it like this when you install windows 10 you don't want it like this or windows 11 it's not running like this so it's 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 comparing two very very different 
purposely built systems to each other. Again, it's like taking a Formula One car. You know, they, I don't know which one is have won the last Grand Prix or the last season. But let's just say I like McLaren. So let's just say, well, McLaren won, you know, the the uh, constructors, whatever the fuck it's called, last year. So that means that everyone and their grandmother should drive a McLaren F1 car. No. What's good on the track don't mean that it's good for the, you know, your grandmother and your family. Because you would probably fucking crash and die in a Formula 1 car. It's the same with operating systems and, 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 and computer technology. What works in a supercomputer, what works in a server, what works in a workstation. Workstation is a little bit more close to what you have. But uh, especially a server, you know, server racks and stuff like that. And um, I think I have a picture of them here. Yeah. What works for this don't work automatically for you the same. Because what runs on this is these kind of things and not what you were like your i3 environment set up with all your fucking hand side porn in the back end it's night and day are there technologies in the operating system from the server market and the supercomputer market that then trickle its way down to the consumer market yes but what is current on the server market and supercomputer market right now is not benefiting you for at least five to ten years if not even more so ssds virtualization multiple cores was on the server market for probably a decade or more before it became consumer available you get what i'm saying here so that's also a bad argument because it may right now be great on the on the supercomputer but again you're not running a supercomputer it may be great on a de on a server but you're not running server hardware and you're not running it like a server or supercomputer if you are telling someone that, oh, you should run Linux because it's great and popular on the server. It's you saying that, hey, mom, you should drive a, a McLaren F1 car. A Formula 1 car is not a family car. Just the fact that I'm running here, you know, I'm running a GUI version of Windows Server could potentially mean that this version of Windows Server is massively more unstable and unreliable compared to this version of Windows Server. I don't know what happened says that, that probably people have, but in theory, because I'm now putting a massive complex desktop environment on top of a, a thing that could be really, really simple, basically having a command line. That's a lot of complexity, you know, to be able to, to do all of these things here. That's a lot of complexity. So what's good for the server is not good for the desktop. So we are not living in a world where operating systems is a one fit suit all of one install suits all. Can you use them? Yeah. I've seen people playing games on Windows Server. I've seen it. Can be done. That don't mean that they're the best at it. it Maybe faster, but you're losing a lot of other shit. Like I said, you don't have HDR and stuff like that. That a lot of gamers nowadays really, really like. Can you get ray tracing to work on the Windows Server? I don't know. I haven't tried it out. See you all later. Bye-bye.